Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Terry Henner from the Savitt Medical Library, University of Nevada, Reno. And today we're going to be talking about um, creating effective research posters. We're going to be talking a lot about the characteristics of effective posters and also talk uh, briefly about the mechanics of constructing a poster. So how do you actually make one using software? Okay. So uh, we uh, will also talk a little bit about dogs briefly, but uh, why present a poster? That's the question I would ask to you. Uh, generally people have something interesting that they wanna share with their peers and a uh, poster is a kind of a low entry point into that kind of scholarly process of sharing research. Um, it can give shape to an idea for publication. If you're thinking of uh, developing a manuscript, but you haven't quite got that far, um, a poster can be a good way to coalesce your thinking and move that process along. Uh, you could, you know, naturally it enhances your scholarly reputation. If you're in a position where there's an expectation to do research, um, it's a resume padding device as well. And, uh, Finally, it's a way to network with colleagues. When you're at a conference, uh, you can talk to people who are like-minded, who are interested in your research and uh, have a dialogue. And that's a, that's a nice experience. Okay, so let me ask a question and mentally just raise your hand. Would you approach this dog? Well, yes, I'm guessing all of you would say, sure, that's a cute dog. Would you approach this dog? This is an even cuter dog. And you're all saying, yeah, I would approach this dog. Okay, now, would you approach this stuff? Now, I've given this workshop in person and only people that have a death wish or are really living on the edge would say, yeah, I would approach this stuff. Uh, generally, you'd say no. And it wouldn't take long for you to decide uh, on any of these cases whether you would approach or not. <clears throat> you don't have to do a, an analysis and say, well, is he dripping saliva? How big are the teeth? Uh, how dangerous do you think he is? Uh, you just know. Uh, and I want to refer just quickly to this book that some of you probably read or are familiar with. It's by Malcolm Gladwell. And he talks about how we're able to make very good decisions sometimes in the blink of an eye, uh, snap, snap decisions that we can make uh, quickly without having very little information. It's a kind of an instinctive process that taps our unconscious abilities. Uh, you see this and you go, well, that's a bad scene. I don't want to be involved in this. Uh, you see this and you think, well, that looks pretty nice. I'll stop here and gaze at that. It's very serene and I, I enjoy that. Uh, so this process is the same that people use at a poster session. It's the idea of blink. Uh, this woman in the foreground is, uh, and the, the question everyone asks is, should I stay or should I go? I think she's saying, eh, I may move on. Uh, this guy, I think, uh, from the expression on his face, may be thinking, I should have moved on. Uh, <laughs> the person in the middle, hard to read. Uh, uh, but the, the question you have to ask as you're moving through a poster session is, do I want to commit my time to this? And that's based on a lot of different factors. Uh, when you are developing a, a poster, it's imperative to focus on approachability. The one thing you need to do more than anything else is design a poster that people want to approach and, and make an assessment on. Uh, and the reason it's critically important is that there is such a competition for eyeballs. Uh, the posters you go to, uh, the poster sessions may not have as many posters as this, or they may, or they may have more, but uh, there are a lot of posters to evaluate, to walk through, and a limited amount of time. So for that reason, uh, your poster has to attract people and uh, assure them that they're about to make a good decision. You need to understand, and I think most of us do, the nature of poster sessions. Poster sessions are different in that it's a browsing activity. It's kind of like going to Netflix and thinking, is this a good movie? Is this a good, you know, you're not looking for the ultimate. You don't have a clear destination in mind. You're just kind of browsing through things and thinking, 
you know, I, uh, this may be a good place to stop and have a conversation with people. Um, poster sessions, you're getting a cup of coffee, you're drinking a beer, having a glass of wine. And, and so it's a, a more chill environment where you're not interested in putting a lot of work into it. Uh, you want to hopefully learn something new, meet some interesting posters and, um, and enjoy the experience. So again, uh, if you think about why presenting a poster, uh, the poster session kind of reinforces all these ideas of, of sharing, uh, having a dialogue, um, you know, networking with colleagues. So to promote viewer engagement, how do you do that? And I, I have four uh, kind of points, important points uh, to discuss. The most important thing to keep in mind though is that you're designing for distance. When you think about a poster session, people when they view your poster are usually four feet away, six feet away, sometimes even farther. So you want to design it so they can scan your poster from a distance. In order to, to do that, the most important thing, have a big title, a big title and big fonts that's very legible because that's the most important thing. Uh, they need to know what the topic of your poster is. You want to have a lot of white space because white space is a good thing. Our brains react very positively to white space uh, and are drawn to it. You want to assure readability. And by that, I mean not just making sure that your poster is legible and you're using good fonts, but structuring it in such a way that it assures the viewer that it's possible to do, that they can come up to your poster and rather quickly get the gist of the poster. So you want to assure the reader or assure the viewer that your poster is easily absorbed. And then finally, you want to harmonize the flow of the poster. That is, let people know uh, where to go, have sort of a visual map, a visual flow, so that uh, they're again assured that they know not just what your poster is about, but how to get through it easily. Um, now, your poster must be assuring. And here's a guy who's standing there thinking, why isn't anyone talking to me? Why isn't anyone stopping to read my poster? And I, I would say that his poster reads kind of like a 19th century Russian novel. You know, it is so dense with text that, you, you know, this is going to be a lot of work to get into. Uh, and people, as I said, don't want to do a lot of work at a poster session. You see this and think, I'll go somewhere else that's a little more engaging and uh, inviting. So you have to assure the viewer that, yeah, this poster is doable. Uh, your poster must be legible. Uh, and I would say parenthetically, your poster should not be disturbingly ugly either. And I would call this just an ugly poster that, you know, it puts people off. But more important, uh, it has like light fonts on a light background. It has very small fonts. Uh, it has high contrast between two colors that don't really work well together. Uh, so your poster must be legible. Uh, you have to know that these are the headers and be able to read them. And, and to, to my eyes, I, I can't read any of this. Yes, I know it's a little fuzzy as an image, but in real life, I'm sure it's not much better. Your poster must have a clear path. And that is, you have to have a starting point and then know where to go from there. It's like merging onto a highway. You know, you're there and you, you need to know what lane to get in and where to, where to stay. Uh, this poster, you have kind of these yellow blocks. You go from this block to that block to that block. You go across, you go diagonally. Uh, your head's just kind of spinning around and around thinking, uh, what's the path? Where am I supposed to go? So your poster should have a navigation, an implicit navigation. And if it doesn't, people will look at it and run away. Okay, these people are running away. It's, you know, in horror, because uh, some posters you go, no, uh, it would be a big, big mistake to stay here. Okay, contrast is very important in a poster. And when you look at this poster, and it's, it has a lot of good things about it. The um, headers are easy to distinguish. You can kind of tell that you go in columns, column one, two, three. 
but the uh, you have kind of a Carolina blue background with a dark blue or black font on top of it. It's really hard to tell. Uh, the background is sort of gray and then darker gray and the text is tiny. Uh, it's just, it, nothing stands out. There's nothing kind of crisp about it. There's no white space. You look at it and go, uh, it's all kind of the same value uh, in terms of contrast and brightness. And that puts people off. So don't do this. In contrast, make a little joke there. Uh, we we have a, a, a poster that really stands out. They have white text on a black background. They have a black text on kind of a white or maybe light gray background. Everything very easy to read. Uh, you know these are the headers. I mean, there's no confusion about your headers, your text. Uh, they have breaks in the columns, so it leads your eye, you know, down. And then this is a different kind of section, very distinct from the first column and the third column. Most important thing, nice contrast. And again, a big font, a big title, easy to read. Um, it's very, very clear. So contrast between your text and your foreground, between your headers in the background, very, very important. And white space, again, it's, it's an appealing poster. To promote scanning, uh, and scanning is a different than contrast and legibility, but it's a way to kind of guide the eye and give the reader some visual cues. Uh, so one, some things you can do, you can use bullet points. So you see over here in the background, they don't have just a huge block of text. They've broken it up into sections with bullets so you can more easily understand the key points and, and digest it. Uh, you can make the headers very obvious, which they've done. Um, and this isn't a, a, like a fancy technique. It's just a nice large font with a, a rectangle around it, but it, it does its job. It achieves the purpose of letting people know this is the header and this is the text underneath it. And then you create a clear path for the reader, which again involves having visual uh, vertical breaks to separate the columns. So, you know, column one, column two, column three. Okay, uh, check time. Uh, enhancing readability. I want to point out there's a difference between contrast and legibility. Uh, high contrast, black on white, very high contrast, the highest contrast. White on black, also the highest contrast, but uh, you get uh, visual fatigue after a while when you're looking at light letters on a back, um, dark background. So you could use that for a, a banner or for your headers, but don't go overboard with that. Not a good idea. And then finally, just as an aside, avoid distracting backgrounds. Don't use a big image behind your uh, text for a, a background, or this looks like a marble countertop. Looks nice, but makes it hard to read. Okay, so uh, enhancing readability, avoid low contrast combinations, use high contrast, use high contrast. Uh, dark on light is okay. Light on dark is okay, but use these sparingly. Okay, fonts. Uh, you know what a non-serif font is. It doesn't have the little doodads and footers and headers and Scroll work. Uh, for a poster, use non serifs, Calibri, Arial, Helvetica, whatever other font you, you like. Don't use serif fonts. Don't use Times New Roman or Garamond or your favorite serif fonts. Avoid all caps. You can see Calibri versus Calibri. It's just simply easier to read something that's not in all caps. Okay, the nuts and bolts of posters. People ask, well, how big should my fonts be? And it uh, depends on how big your poster is, how much room you have, but oftentimes we're presenting a poster that's four feet by three feet. And for that size poster, the title, uh, 72 points minimum, bigger if you can, header about 50 point, the body text about 36 point. Each section of your text about 100 words, and these are just guidelines, but about 100 words and the total text in your body, about 800 words, much more than 1,000, and your, uh, 
you know, you're presenting war and peace to people and they, they don't want that. Okay, my pet peeve, no abstracts. Look how much space an abstract takes in this poster. It's about maybe a fifth or a sixth of the total space. And the abstract, it's hard to read and it's the important things in the abstract should be extracted out into separate sections. You should have an introduction. You should have a conclusion. Um, so no abstracts, waste of time. Absolutely not. Now flow directing the eye. This isn't a perfect poster there. You know, I would uh, like to see changes in it, but one thing it does very well, you can tell this is a column, this is a column, this is a column. It directs your, the reader. Uh, they know without a doubt that they start here and read down, start here, read down, start here, and read down. Um, uh, just an aside, they do something very good. No one reads references on a poster. I know you're supposed to have them and, and you should, but no one reads them, so put them in the smallest possible font and even a, <clears throat> a small header as well. References just take up a lot of unnecessary space, so squeeze it as much as you can. A nice big title and a nice small uh, author name and small institution name. I'll talk about that a little more in the next few minutes. Another one that illustrates this flow, you start at the top and go down, start at the top and go down. Here are your conclusions, here's your introduction, your references. People understand it, they, they uh, innately approve of this format. Um, so if you, if you structure a poster like that, at least people will say, yeah, I, I understand this. I'm willing to uh, spend a minute and work my way through it. Our brain likes to be led. That's what it comes down to. They like, it likes to have a path from a start to a finish. Uh, so think about that when you're developing your poster, have a start, a finish and a clear path between the two. This is a drawing by a famous artist. I won't tell you who, uh, but maybe you can guess. But uh, I wanna talk briefly about eye tracking. And there are a lot of studies dealing with eye tracking, partly because of the way we, we read, we learn to read. We start at the top, we start at the left, and we work our way down. And if you have doubts about this as a, like an effective way of developing a kind of a graphic uh, design, uh, just go to the Cheerio or the cereal section in the supermarket. They all do this. They give you a signpost. Oh, uh, I didn't even realize that. It's, 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 it's a signpost. It happens to be post. But uh, it directs your eye upwards to the left-hand corner and says, start here, and then work your way down. Start here with General Mills, work your way down. Uh, and that's what you want to do with your poster. Um, so you start here, you know, you have your title across the top, and then people know where to start, and they'll work their way down, up and down the columns. This is the way to structure a poster. There are other ways, but this is a a format that you know is going to work for people and invite them in. Okay, that just shows it again. If you don't follow this format, if you direct their eye someplace else, it creates a very uncomfortable, unsettling feeling. You know, you feel like you're falling down. Uh, it's just not a good thing. So banners, uh, I, I call this the fat banner syndrome where uh, you have a huge banner with uh, a giant institutional logo and uh, very large fonts for the author's name and institution. Uh, I'll show you some examples, but what you should do is simply use the largest font possible for your title and then make everything else as small as you can. And then again, use high contrast fonts and background colors. So I uh, bring this up because it's so horribly bad uh, maybe the University of Minnesota says if you're doing a uh, poster, you have to use orange and whatever that color is, brick red. Uh, do they need these two M's? Maybe they could have just eliminated this M and then had more room to have the title going all the way across the banner. Uh, that, you know, that would have been a good start. Uh, okay, this is a, a nicer approach. Uh, and what I like too is that it's left justified so that 
you're starting on the left-hand corner and reading across instead of trying to read something that's centered, which honestly uh, makes people kind of zigzag around and it's it, it's not as good an approach, in my opinion. They could have made the, the banner sm or the logo smaller so they'd have more room for the title. Here's something too, uh, and you have to kind of check your ego on this. People are not looking at posters because you're the author. They're just looking at a title. So make the author line small. People honestly don't care who the author is unless it's your friend and they're looking for your poster. And in that case, you're standing in front of the poster. They should be able to recognize it, right? So make, make the author line small. Make the institution line small. Make the title really big. Make your logo as small as you can. Here's a poster that doesn't do a good job. It's it's a bad contrast. It's centered. Uh, it has a giant logo. Here's another person from the same school, and they do a nice job of separating the logo from the title. Title's much bigger, easier to read, and the author and the uh, the institutional information much smaller. So imagine you're walking through a poster session. You see this and go, okay, I, I can read the title. I know what this is about. A lot of white space. It's kind of gray space, but we'll call it white space. One bad thing, the headers are sort of a purple on blue, not a good color combination. Uh, just go with white on blue if you want to do that reverse video thing. Uh, so uh, in summary, uh, not, not the end of the presentation, but in summary of this section, no matter how nice a smile you have, unless your poster is attractive, unless it's easy to assimilate uh, and understand at a glance, people aren't going to stop. So white space, white space is just a good thing. Have white space. Uh, harmonize the flow of eye movements. And what I mean is make sure that they have a path that's absolutely clear and unambiguous. These kind of yellow headers, and normally you would say see a header and go kind of down and down and down. But the way these kind of blend together, your eye tends to merge that into one long horizontal yellow line. And so you're drawn from here to here across the page. Bad thing. Another bad thing is the color choice, black on yellow. What else is black and yellow in the world? Well, you know, when there's a crime scene and they have that police tape around something to keep you away, that's black and well, black and yellow. Highway signs telling you to merge or that it's a, a deer crossing or uh, a falling rocks from above onto the highway, black and yellow. So not a good choice generally. And also this student, and it's a little hard to see, but you know, I talked about bullet points is a good thing, but look at this. Every single thing on the entire poster is a bullet point. And if not, it's numbers and then numbers with bullet points underneath. So they overuse the idea and as a result, it made the uh, clarity and legibility worse than better. So again, harmonize your eye movements. It's pretty clear here where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to read first, how the poster fl kind of flows. Uh, so that that's your goal. Uh, nice headers, white on a blue background, very clear, easy to read, and unequivocal or unambiguous. You know that that's a header. Uh, Contrast and font size, tiny fonts, sort of a gray on a washed out color, hard to read. Uh, there's no, no contrast. Everything is the same light intensity. Uh, and we don't like that. So you, you move on. So don't do this. Also red on a kind of weird grayish green background, unattractive as well. Uh, text density. This has a nice big title, but you look at the poster and it's just, again, you're reading War and Peace. It's text, text, text. And no one wants to stop at a poster where they have to read. Uh, you want to have white space. You want graphics. You want uh, bullet points. You want to be able to understand the poster quickly without having to take a microscope to it. Okay. How to make a po uh, poster. Okay. The there are different ways of making a poster. The easiest is to use PowerPoint. Uh, so you use the PowerPoint program, like one slide, and you put your elements into it, and then you, you set the uh, printing size and you're done. You could also use, 
existing PowerPoint templates if you don't want to start from scratch. But I'll show you PowerPoint one, two, three, because basically there are only three uh, steps involved. It's easy. You go to PowerPoint, you select design. On the same screen, you go to slide size, and then you select custom size, okay? So design, uh, slide size, custom size, and then it will give you this option. Slide size is custom. You're doing a 48 by 36 inch poster. I mean, you, you just type those numbers in and you say landscape, assuming it's a landscape poster and you say, okay, and you're done. Then you could build your poster within PowerPoint like that. If you are not real confident about your design skills, you just want to do it more easily. There are lots of places on the internet where you can get free templates to build your poster. So you can look through it and go, hey, I like this format or I like that, blah, 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 or I don't like that. Uh, and then you can customize it. You can also um, see if your institution provides templates. And at our school, they someone threw together this template for a 36 by 48 poster. And uh, I look at it and it violates all kinds of rules. It has a giant big fat header. It has gray on a blue background with black text. It's just kind of unappealing, not so great. But what you can do is take your institutional template and you could uh, make it in your own image. So you can make the, the title bigger, the author smaller, the logo smaller, columns wider, brighter, whatever. Uh, so that, that's an easy way of coming up with a poster and recommended file formats for printing. Before you do anything else, check with the person running the printer because they may tell you, oh, we can print it as a PowerPoint file. That's inherently dangerous because PowerPoint, when you print it in a large format, things tend to move, the fonts get out of whack, the images ship. So it's better to save it as, if you can, as a JPEG or a TIFF file, but get, get recommendations from your printer. To print uh, convert from PowerPoint to JPEG, it's, it's kind of a three-step process. You, uh, you can save a PowerPoint as an Adobe PDF file. And some printers do very well just printing as a PDF file. But then uh, to save to a JPEG or a TIFF, you need something like PowerPoint that can open the file and then do a save as. The reason PowerPoint is nice, and this is just how you do it. And uh, when you're in PowerPoint, you do a save as, and you say, uh, uh, save as type PDF. You know how to do this. And you give it a name and then you just convert it. The nice thing about Power, uh, Photoshop is that you, know, you can see your whole poster and see what it's going to look like, but you can also go to view and say, view in actual size, right? And when you do that, it shows you what it's going to look like when it's printed. So you, uh, you can see that the title is going to be this big on the posters people walk by, and you think, yeah, that, that should do the job. The, uh, the author line will be that big. Now, uh, just uh, to explain things a little or give you a frame of reference, this title is 90 point. The author uh, line is 36. The headers are 75. The text body is 36. That seems to work pretty well for me. Uh, finally, uh, there is a trend to have kind of a streamlined poster that doesn't tell you very much at all. And it has a QR code and says, if you really want to know what our poster is, click on the QR code. Uh, that can work well if the QR code is pointing to the references or pointing to, to um, kind of related papers that you've published or to your institutional web page. But uh, to just recreate the poster on a QR code, uh, people tend not to want to do, try and do it on their phone as they're walking by. So I'm not sure that's really the best thing to do. It's, it was advanced as the new cool way to do posters. Not sure it's completely effective. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. And I'm done. Uh, this tells me uh, it's time to say, I hope I have shed some light on the topic and you've learned something new or interesting. Uh, and at this point, we could open it up for a questions for a minute or two if we have any.